Let's do this. We're almost done with the Insane Trilogy. Ugh, sorry, far away from the mic there. All that I have left is Future Tense, which if you watched the last stream, I actually got... Uh, I, I had been going for a while, I got a little stymied by Future Tense. Last stream was supposed to be the end of Crash 3, but uh, that didn't happen. It was a little bigger than anticipated, and so I'm doing what I should have done with the hidden level in Crash 1, Stormy Ascent. I should have made it its own stream, so that's what we're doing today. Depend. I don't think this will be as hard as Stormy Ascent. We'll have to see. So, uh, tentatively, this might even be a less than two hour stream. I thought about maybe doing some Smash afterwards or something, but, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't think people are around today to play with, so... At the very least... Activision presents... A smashing blast from the past. At the very least, we're gonna finish this off once and for all. Developed by vicarious visions. Rutabaga. It's Crash Bandicoot. No coffee today, just soda pop. Alright, so you can see I'm missing some things. Also, the other thing I'm missing is that I did not... So I, I do know what I missed on Future Tense. I, knew what, I know what the problem was there. The other thing that happened last stream is that Coco did not want to give me my All Gold Relics gem. So... I don't know if that requires this one now, or what is going on there. We'll have to see. We'll have to find out this stream. But first, I'm gonna take out- I'm gonna take care of the gems. Which I attempted on the previous one, but I know what I did wrong. I know what I'm missing. This would be my, uh, opportunity to go to leisurely pace before I spend three hours on this time trials. Oh, that's on that platform. No, I'm sure it won't be that bad. I say that. I've said that before about levels that then prove to be that bad. I'm still, uh, I'm still doing the Crash 2 highlights reel. Almost done with that. So that'll probably be Oh, not too long after this stream. I don't know if I'll start doing Crash 3 immediately. I might need a break from Crash. These fellas. If I hadn't have been going so long yesterday, I may have caught what it was I missed. It was, uh, it was on the skull platform, the death route. Yesterday, the last time I played. At least it was not as big a gap as, uh, the Battle Network 2 previous stream and finale. Uh-oh! Oh. Okay, you know what? Here. I shoot. I have gun, I shoot. Alright, uh, should I checkpoint? I should probably checkpoint. If 
before I go up here. Wait, I... Oh, I died. I can't do this. God damn it. That's right, there's a death route on this level, so I have to get at least that far without dying at all. Or did I not die after... Maybe I didn't die after a checkpoint. Maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Well, I guess let's be safe. I'm still on the fence about whether I want to get, uh... Whether I want to get the Nitro Fueled on Switch or on Steam. Because the reason I got this version on Steam, I waited for that, was because of the achievements. Which are fun, they add some content to the game, but... At the same time, the portability of the Switch is really nice. I guess I could conceivably get a, a good enough gaming laptop that it wouldn't be an issue for Steam, but at the moment, I do not have that. This was our first checkpoint. I don't think I died after this point. Rapid fire. I'm glad I was able to leave the level and start from the, be the beginning again. It did not put me back at the checkpoint. I wonder if that was true in the original game or not. I'm also surprised they didn't put anything in the, I said this last time, in the mirrors, in the background. I thought for sure if they were going to have a uh, mirror gimmick, they would use that to hide a crate back there or something. I guess it's good that they didn't. That would be a very mean crate. A lot of people would miss that. I don't know why I'm not Coco either, I just I didn't think to change. Remember you coming down. Ow. I'm fine, we're good. Hello, oops. longest you've gone without sleep. Not not that long. You know, 20-something hours. I watched a, uh, a playthrough of this level to find out what I missed, and the guy just did not even conceive to fire at, at the dude. Just stand behind his radius. That just never occurred to him. He actually died a lot here. So, here's what I missed. I, the first time I went through this, I thought, uh, I thought, oh, well, they have all these boxes here because it's a skull route and there are boxes here. They're going to want me to backtrack the skull route. So, I did not, uh, I did not destroy all these. I just left all those uh, TNTs and such sitting there. Those were the boxes I was missing. I 
I had a game of Uno that lasted more than two hours, 30 minutes. Yeah? Uno is serious shit. I saw the movie. That guy's not going to turn his back. You know what? That's fine. I'll go around him. Plenty of room. Charles, you must be bored if you're here watching Crash. I don't remember the last time I played Uno. I played cards with my grandmother a lot, and her game of choice was Skip Bow. Which, I don't remember what playing card game that rips off. An evil deck. How, how does one make an evil deck of Uno? Oh, more cards? Checkpoint here. Uh oh! Oh, I'm okay, that's fine. Oh, there I go. I keep banging my head on the ceiling. Thank God it drops you off right outside this. I don't mind challenges too much as long as you can always try again quickly. Whoop! It's games that make you play over, like, an entire level again, just to get pat back to the part and try again. They're obnoxious to me. You know, marathon games. That's, that's why I always, uh... That's why I encourage abundant checkpoints in Mario Maker. Short challenges with abundant checkpoints. meant to do that. Oh, I'm at 99 anyway. It makes no difference. Oh, hello. Were you always there? Zalrog, did you make that Pokemon bus animation? Yes, I did. That is the extent of my drawing ability. Particularly on a computer. Proudly made in MS Paint. Oh! Oh, actually, they did use a... Uh, they did put a box out in the mirror area. I think the previous times I went through this level, I just got lucky and uh, slid the guy into it, is what happened.
Oh, okay. Worked out. We're fine. There we go. See? Oh, I forgot about him. doesn't have a thing you can use sound. Is it like a uh, flip note or something? You can always export the video into like a movie maker or something easy. If you're just going to add sound to it, I'm sure there are even uh, there are free video editors online that can just put video and audio together is all. I can't make it up without the thing. I really don't have any rhyme or reason as to how I get through this. I just kind of run through and pray every time. That particular section. Yeah, I've been there. I have, uh... I've attempted to reset my sleep schedule after staying up too late. By, uh, you know, staying up a day and a half. Unfortunately, it never works for me. I still end up uh, waking up around the same time. Let's see what these are. Anything? There was something in there. Was it like two, three crates? It's half past eleven for you. Okay, so you're over in the you're over in the UK. Oops. Yeah, it's two, three crates. Okay, so those are worth getting. clock is active. I can get them. Not a moment sooner. Alright, here we go. Time trials. Right into those. Too early. I had to do this all the time in the original Crash Warp. This sort of thing. I remember particularly the uh, the Sphinxinator, or some level one of one of the Egypt levels had those four crates in the back. I think it was Sphinxinator. And I had to do that with the clock in order to get them. Nope. No time for you, son. I guess I should see if the crates in the back are worth getting. I 
I'm gonna guess no. I'm gonna guess they're not time crates. They'd have to all be three crates. No. Turn around, Crash. This is a very long level, so hopefully it's forgiving. Like uh, Stormy Ascent. Well, I guess even that wasn't that forgiving. All right, might have to sacrifice this. Yep, they're not worth getting. All right. Well, now we know. if you get stuck here. Uh, this is planned to be the whole stream, is this level. This is a notoriously difficult level, so, yeah. Expect a potential two hours of this. This is the uh, only level in the trilogy that was not by the original game's devs. It was made by the people who made the the Ensane Trilogy, the, the remaster. So this is their only original level. Fuck, I jumped too high. Damn it. I guess I could have shown, uh, I guess I could have shown Darian's art. He, uh, just in the Discord drew me as a Code Lyoko character. That was the wrong time to do that! I'm gonna do it just before they come on, thereabouts. Precise, are they gonna expect me to get that? I wonder. Also, I might. I'm probably gonna need all three masks. There's probably going to be three masks on this level. I guess I could just, uh, I could just bounce on the TNT. And that will, uh, that will knock out, that'll explode and knock out the three crate. Uh-oh! God damn it. just before they turn on, I think. Maybe a l uh, like halfway before they turn on. Damn it. Oh no, I can't, the T TNT's on bottom, I can't bounce on that.
I missed the... Too early. Right about there. There we go. Right into the pit. I think I only got one of them. Well, that ain't good. between uh, Cortex and Eggman. I feel like Eggman probably has better tech. Honestly, it's kind of odd that Cortex has robots at all, given that he's a, uh, he's like a bioengineer. He specializes in mutations. You have to start all the way back there. Uh, yes, because there are two... There are two time crates that I want to get in that pile of crates. So I need to get those to uh, freeze the clock for a while at the start. This is interesting, a platformer that has a, a dedicated speedrun mode. Kind of makes me wonder what other platformers would be like if they did something similar. Yeah, Eggman definitely goes bigger. Eggman got them giant sky fortresses. Shit like that. Cortex doesn't got that. I mean, I say that. I guess he has, like, the Cortex Vortex. He's got his own space station. It's no death egg in size. Like, a planet destroyer. I get, well... Yeah, no, it's not a planet destroyer. Cortex can brainwash the whole human race. Eggman can blow up the whole human race. Also, I guess technically the, uh, the Evolvo Ray is a Brio thing. So arguably Cortex does not specialize in mutation. those two time crates hiding in there. Sorry, taking a drink. Man, playing through Sonic Heroes again. It's not like the, the concept for the story was bad. They could have very easily made something work with it really well. They could have had, you know, dramatic cutscenes and everything. If it got the love and attention of Sonic Adventure 2, it could, it would have, it could have been a very, very cool, very serviceable story that put Metal Sonic to use for the first time in a very long time. Why do you like Crash and not Jack and Daxter platforming? It's not that I don't like Jack and Daxter platforming, just not as much as Crash. His jump feels lower. He feels slower to respond. There's more delay between the button input and him actually jumping. It's more realistic is the problem for me. Crash gets six feet of air the moment you press the button. Jax is more human. Or Jack. Jack does a teeny little, a teeny little hop, and then he does a piddly little, piddly little double jump in the air. Not that Crash is, uh, not that Crash is any, like, beacon of great double jumping. Now, Crash, 
Crash just stops horizontal momentum when he double jumps and goes straight up. Which is jarring, but at least he gains significant height from it. It doesn't feel like Jack does. Jack and Ratchet both have very pitiful double jumps. They're really just hang time, not really double jumps. They keep you in the air longer, but they barely get you any height. I also just think the... I don't know, I think the setting for a crash is more visually interesting than Jack. Jack 1 hurt itself a little bit aesthetic, as aesthetically for me by trying, trying to be like Crash, but with more realism. talking about Jack could do those things? I really don't remember the extent of Jack's platforming. I mean, it's really not fair for me to even talk about it with... I've played Jack 1 several times, but not recently. Like, we will play the Jack and Daxter series. It's on our agenda. You'll be better off getting my impressions from it while we're playing it. Oh no! Ah! That's lot that's missiles. Like I can tell you what I remember of it now, but it'll be a lot more accurate once we're playing it and I'm holding it in my hands. I, I, it felt like I missed the crates, I wasn't sure. Honestly, I remember Jack 2 and, uh, Jack 2 and 3 better. Jack 1, just, to me, as a fan of Crash, just felt like a watered-down version of Crash. Nice, easy, evolving environment. I don't like easy evolving. I like, I like to jump between wildly different landscapes. I like to see different things. I guess, to some extent. I don't know, I guess there's a balance for me. I always did find that a little bit silly about Sonic games, particularly Sonic Advance, how uh, randomly one zone would lead into another. The Sonic games the, it never seem to make a whole lot of geographical sense. I gotta find a way through those guys.
I feel like Jack 1 didn't have enough world building. You were just kind of thrown into it. Because that's kind of, to me, the defining trait of fantasy, is, is heavy world building. Ability mask had I kept them all. Let's see how I can do it without invincibility. I'll die without invincibility. I kind of got a mist feeling from Jack 1. Survive that again somehow. Ow! Oh! Little too low, little too early. Like Jack is a servant and squire to Samos. See, that was never explained what his role was, though. He just kind of lived there. With the old man, I guess?
The fact that they went the direction they did with Crash 2 and or Crash Jack 2 and 3 was namely due to the response the first game got that a lot of people felt it was just more of the same. Finally made it through with my masks. got the, uh, like, orphaned hero vibe from Jack 1 Jack, which is a very overdone trope. You know, the chosen one living in the, t in the quiet little village with his childhood, with his childhood friend who is a girl and likes him. It was a platformer with a lot of very stereotypical RPG vibes. RPG tropes, rather. I remember the very first time I played Jack 1. I didn't even get past the first world, the first, the green eco area, was that it? Samos' realm? I was just going through area after area waiting for something different, a new kind of terrain besides just, you know, green world 1-1, one, one, and I, I wasn't getting it for too long. I just kind of lost interest. I failed to jump that time. 
Yeah, my favorite, uh, I think my favorite Jack 2 and 3 levels were the wilderness, wilderness ones, too. They were definitely more scarce in those games. gonna keep my mask. not enough of a transition for you. No, it wasn't. Whatever. There were a lot of things going wrong that run. Still speaking of runs. Still waiting for that Spelunky 2 news. If you hate difficulty and repetition, you must hate roguelikes, Charles. Are there any of those you uh, play or enjoy? Oh, come on! I jumped on him! A method, if I can do that reliably. I got... Oh, I got one mask. Did I lose a mask? Oh yeah, the guy I failed to jump on. familiar with that one. That works, that's fine. I now have two masks. If I can find a third, nope, I'll just lose it. As soon as I open my mouth. <laughs> Damn it. You run an evil lair. I know Binding of Isaac is very popular, but uh, Twin Sticks aren't for me, so I wasn't able to get into that one. Pretty much just Spelunky is the only roguelike I've been interested in. And to the Gungeon, yeah, Jack plays that. It's another Twin Stick. Actually, I think there's a, uh, we did one stream of it together. Again, not my genre, but, you know, we played it. I'm gonna get my invincibility. It's gonna happen. Here we go. Go on up. Oh, good. I was worried those wouldn't break. Doing good. I gotta not fuck up this now. I gotta not fuck up any jumps. Fuck! Rip. 
Uh, isn't, is Broforce a roguelike? Is that in the same vein as uh, Enter the Gungeon? A lot of twin stick roguelikes. Darkest Dungeon is more like a strategy kind of thing. Oh. Hello, Darian. We were just talking about uh, Jack and Daxter earlier, talking about roguelikes. You played Death Road to Canada. I have not. I've heard of that one. Isn't that like an odd combination of a roguelike and something like a Telltale Games? Ronald McDonald will remember this. Isn't that Death Road to Canada? Or am I completely off the mark? Okay, I found my pattern for those guys. Just Oh, I can't just run through them. God damn it. Or that for that matter. Or fuck it. Tooth and Tail of Rogue? I, I don't know what that is. What is Rogue like, actually? Uh, randomly generated levels, permadeath. If you only get one run in the in the randomly generated world you get, then I call it a Rogue like. Proce procedural generation and one life. how good my timing was by uh, where the timer freezes at. What's the one where oh, there's a there's a roguelike game that is a ca it's a Castlevania it's like a Metroidvania thing, but uh, each time you play the game, you play as the child of the previous hero, and you can you can uh, generate with one or any number of uh, of traits, positive or negative. Like you could have a blind character. Or colorblind character, and your your whole screen is grayscale. Th things like that. I don't remember what that particular game was called. Honestly, and this is controversial, but be because it meets those two standards, I would call Minecraft Hardcore mode a roguelike. In the broad family of roguelikes. What? Go up! God damn it, elevator. Oh! 
Whoa, that was a mistake. Probably peeking all over the place right now. Rogue Legacy, that was it. I guess if you add in the requirement of it needing a specific end goal, then uh, Minecraft Hardcore would arguably not count. I mean, it's got the end dragon, but... Minecraft is always off on its own genre-defying thing. Someone posted a thread on the Smash forums of uh, 20 characters you would add. And I had to really think about it, because 20 is a lot. That's a lot of potential newcomers to come up with. Oh! Uh, I don't like how this is going. Okay. Went through that a little bit slow, but... I made it alive, and I lost my mask, and I'm dead. Dungeon Explorer, Warriors of Ancient Arts. Okay, no, I've not heard of that. Again, even, even knowing what the genre is and several examples of it, the only one I really play is uh, Spelunky. And arguably Minecraft. I haven't done hardcore in Minecraft in a while. Remember last time I did, I did beat the End Dragon. The only thing at the time I've never done in Hardcore Minecraft is uh, the Wither. Damn it! Pepsi is Pepsi Man procedurally generated. Also, don't you uh, don't you respawn and do levels over again in Pepsi Man? Isn't there, like, lives and such? Oh, you're talking about Smash Newcomers. Yeah, sure. Goku and Geiko. The Geiko, Gecko, and... Geiko, Gecko, and Goku. Would love for the Geiko, Gecko to do a cosplay. Then he would be Goku the Geiko, Gecko. Goku, the guy, go, get, go. Oh, too fast, too fall. I was, yeah, I just, I misinterpreted your, uh, your comment, Charles. Gex needs to be in Smash. Gex hasn't been doing anything in a while. I think Gex is about as relevant these days as Croc. Earthworm Jim, yeah, you could argue for him. I know Rayman and Bomberman were definitely... They've been on mine for a while. God damn it. I was jumping over them reliably, now I'm just failing. Crash and Spire were big ones. If we're going as, as high as 20, then Jack and Ratchet would also both be cool. As well as Sly. I, w I would say Steve and Sans. I would. It would be unironically interesting to have them in Smash. Chronicles of Riddick. Now that's a book. Or 
is it a movie? Is it both? Is Riddick the one about the little mouse with the sword? That's the tale of Despero. And I missed the time crates. The whole cast of PlayStation All-Stars, that's right, with such gems as... Cole! Evil Cole! Fat Princess! Emmett Graves from Who Gives a Fuck? I know Jack's long, uh, been a longtime fan of uh, Travis Touchdown. With No More Heroes, Heroes 3 happening, it's not impossible. I feel like... Uh, I feel like more Sonic characters are probably deserved. Given that it's... Like, including spin-offs, the next biggest video game franchise after Mario, arguably. And it also has the long-running, you know, rivalry with Mario, the Mario-Sonic thing. Especially with other third parties getting Echo characters, like uh, Ken and Richter. You know, Sonic's do. Get Eggman, or even Tails in there. Damn it. Captain Quark! For a second there, Darian, I thought you were suggesting that Pyramid Head was a, a character from the series Mortal Kombat. At least I haven't taken a hit to that guy yet. Doom guy. Doom guy's big. Oh, how'd I forget Doom guy? I didn't put him on my 20. Doom guy and Crash are the two characters I'm expecting the most for the two remaining newcomers. Those are my guesses. For uh, fan, fan demand, you know, iconography, and uh, moveset potential. More so Doom Guy than Crash when it comes to moveset potential. Crash honestly doesn't do a whole lot of interesting stuff. He just kind of run runs and jumps. Contra could be in Smash. I love John Contra. He's one of my favorite video game mascots. Oh, I think I can make that with just a uh, slide spin jump. Damn it! Fuck it. Yeah, Doom Guy. You seem surprised that people would want Doom Guy in Smash. They got Bayonetta, a character who's all about sex, and partially about violence. If they're willing to publish a character that's all about sex, a character that's all about violence is absolutely going to fly. At least in America. Bubsy for Smash. What could possibly go wrong? That was a terrible Bubsy. A little bit of a late start there, that's okay.
You know, uh, hey Charles, are you aware that Bubsy directed, was the voice director for Sonic the Hedgehog games? It feels mean to say that. I feel like I'm, sh I'm sure Lanny Minnelli is a perfectly, you know, lovely, nice lady. But man, is her name on a lot of shit. A lot of bad stuff has Lanny Minnelli on it. Including all, well. I don't know if I should say Awesome Knots is that bad. Voice wise, you know, it's fine. But uh, Lanny Minnelli, Bubsy is in Awesome Knots. The actress. Death Clock for Smash. Hey Nathan, we got something in the mail! You know what this is about? Fuck is a Busby. Well, that's the person that uh, takes your takes your food away after you're done with it at a restaurant. That's a Busby. I feel like I'm probably gonna need my triple masks to do this. I'm still gonna go for it anyway, because there's always the chance that I'm being more anal than I need to be. Yep! Yeah. Okay, that was a little lost time. We're here to make Smash Metal! Blacker than the blackest black times infinity! Had to be a shadow fighter of- Toki would be a shadow fighter of Luigi? So does that mean Squiscar would be Mario? Scribble knots and Cooking Mama are not impossible. They'd be weird, but not impossible. Scribble knots. How would you, how would you do that though? You'd have to have a move set like uh, involve. I guess just arbitrary objects. Cause it's not like he's got any signature objects in the game. The object is whatever you draw. Damn it! progress so far. And it ruins it. I was making those guys consistently and then it just stopped. I would keep adding Castlevania care. Come on, Darian. You can't do that. Oh no, don't belly flop, Crash! Dead. The characters I would most like to see personally are Crash and Spyro. But realistically, Spyro doesn't seem likely. Mostly because of his, uh, his abysmal lack of popularity in Japan. 
which we've been over this on stream before, is because they just, they butchered the Spyro games in the transition to Japan, and as a result, he never took off at all there. I also unironically want Waluigi. And Tingle. I unironically want both of those. About the girls from Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. Not Dead or Alive, specifically Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. It has to be those ones. Oh, but Charles, you got such lovely full-bodied women in uh, Mortal Kombat to lust over. The most attractive women in fighting games. All are from Mortal Kombat. This is just common knowledge. Like, uh, Forearmed Lady. What's her name? Pretty sexy, right? God damn it, masks! You know who'd be a candidate if he didn't just, like, fuck up his own franchise royal over the years? Is, uh, Frogger. Because, I mean, the first game is, you know, a huge part of video game history. Then they didn't know what to do with it. I mean, no, well, no, the, the, they had, they were good. The first two Frogger games on the PS1 were pretty good. And they kept in the spirit of the original game. Then it just went to PS2 and onward, and they just tried to make him this odd, generic platforming mascot and just failed in every regard. Frogger got the shit end of the franchise stick. Street Fighters, where the girl's at. I like I like Sakura. Chun Li got them thunder thighs. I'm not not a Chun Li fan. She's a strong woman. I respect her. I would wouldn't necessarily want to date her. Still, it's these drops that kill me every time. I'm waiting for this fucker. No, I need up there. God damn it. Well, there goes my time. That was the end of the level two. All right, gold. Yeah, gold. If I hadn't got caught on that last wheel, that probably would have been it. But that was bad. Cammy, Cammy's all right. Duke Nukem for Smash. Also, John Turok. My brother had Turok Evolution on the PS2 when we were kids. That was the only FPS game we owned, and it was about the only game that he played. Okay, so Mystery Solved, it does the all... the all gold relics gem does require future tense in this. Oh, and we get a little fireworks show. You know, you know what my problem was? I wasn't using Coco. I wasn't using Best Girl. That's why it wasn't Platinum. Here we go. Will you stream Minecraft again? Eventually. I don't know, I don't know when. The guys kind of stopped playing it. We'd have to see who's online, be in the mood for a group stream. When we do, I'll probably reset the end and that'll be when we uh, take on the Ender Dragon as a group or something. Oh, wow, oh, it was too early.
Who is this Sobek? And how may I praise him? What realm be he the devil of? No! God damn it. I pray to Sithrak, the god of unending hate. For nothing you do can disappoint him. He already hates you unconditionally. That is the glory of Sithrak. Okay, good. I can spin jump. God damn it, that missile! Maybe I can, uh, maybe I can slide under it. So I actually, I did get there without the invincibility. So it might be possible without. I might not need to worry so much about getting all three masks. We'll see. Going in maskless. Ooh, hello. Sub 55? Not enough. Bah. There needs to be less than that. Maybe I do need the, the triple masks. We'll see. All right, decent time on those. You know, it's been gonna come down to the point one seconds. I get those first crates in. Very important. Sobek. Sobek. Selket. Anubis. Anukis. Ra. Mut. Nut. Ptah. Shout out to the Prince of Egypt. I haven't blown myself up on that TNT once. I'm proud of that. Ooh, that's good. That's not. Okay, that's fine. I'm still gonna attempt it despite my lack of three masks. Now. Lack of any masks. Down the hole. 
The only god of fertility I worship is the Tanuki, with its mighty Tanuki balls. I'm, just, I'm gonna keep trying until I get those three masks. I really want those three masks. No, no, no nyucks on this level. No little, no little, no little nyucks sticking out of any, any crevasses anywhere. I just ne learned that Egyptians mummify crocodiles. That's pretty metal. I still have not watched Pompoco, a children's movie all about giant raccoon testicles. Which, in America, is of course much worse than the Penguin's children's movie. Well, the Penguin movie about Vietnam. Because that, that's just violence. As long as there's no hardcore fucking. As long as there's no te ten uh, tentacles. Testicles. Testicles or tentacles in Penguin Vietnam, then that's the more, the more America-approved mo movie. I say that, but I think Disney dubbed Pompoco. I think they still did it. That was a Ghibli movie about Tanuki. that extra spin. Squidward testicles. They put the wrong name on the trophy. get the guy, but then I get hit by the nitro that is specifically put there for that purpose. I guess that's as good a place as any to use a mask, if I'm not getting the invulnerability. Oh no! Oh, there's my other mask. We're in the final area of the level, though.
Sub 54? Still not there. A little, little faster. Learned a new word, ostentatious. I don't know what that means, but I know it was the name of an, uh, an Alfie Ray. Uh, Alfie Ray. Ralphie May comedy special that was in Austin, Texas. It was a pun. Isn't it similar to, like, audacious? Like, being a brazen asshole with no filter? Isn't that ostentatious? Because that, that's that sure is Ralphie May, all right. God damn it, I keep trying to go for that and I can't get the jump right. The, uh, the crocodiles of Crocodopolis. Crocodilopolis. Should definitely go to war with the pandas of Pandemonium. That's the capital of hell. So Pandemonium is the capital of hell, and Crocodilopolis is the capital of fucking, is what I've learned today. <laughs> Every time. Two masks. I think I am gonna use one on, uh... Nope. No, I'm not. Fuck. I ended up using both of them there. I was going to use one of them there. Nope. What, there's an invisible wall here? Really? Pop. Characterized by vulgar or pretentious display. Yeah. Designed to attract notice. Sounds like a very marketing word. Put something sexual or other or offensive on it just to get people talking. It's an ostentatious marketing campaign. It's all publicity is good publicity. God diff. I want those three masks. Seaman croc. That's, uh... That was in a croc game. He wore a little sailor out outfit. He was a seaman croc. get that coming down, it'll save a little time. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, though. Got it. The patterns are not the same every time for these obstacles. Is part of this problem here. Like, you can tell just from that first area that uh, platforms are in different spots between attempts. Which is problematic for something like this. Alright, here's the end. I got two masks. Oh, I can just go straight over that. No! Oh! 
My iframes killed the dude! I didn't want to kill him, I wanted to jump on him! Robbed! That was going so well! Ooh, I did get it coming down. Save precious frames! You did that same thing again. Same problem with Stormy Ascent with the patterns. Yep. I did figure out how they worked in Stormy Ascent and how they loaded in. Because it did seem to be uh, as you approached in that game. It does not seem to be the case for this one, though. Unless I'm approaching at different speeds. First time for everything. What game doesn't suffer from b bullshit invisible walls? I mean, neither does this game. The invisible wall was only slightly annoying because I was trying to kill myself. You know what game doesn't make you want to kill yourself? God damn it. Or I know this stage is getting a death reel. Maybe. I mean, it could. How long have we been going? We... Okay, we've been going an hour and a half. This took, as I guess, as long as anticipated. I did for this stage what I should have done for Stormy Ascent, is I gave it its own stream. That wasn't the original plan, but... After flubbing it the last time... You know, I just said, fuck it. This is obviously gonna take a while. I'm not doing a uh, death reel for Crash 2. But I am doing a highlights reel. I really thought you were going to say Jack and Daxter. I don't know why I, di I, I didn't expect a Jet Moto 2 from you. Is it, maybe that counts as a brick joke. Okay, I got my masks. Got my two masks. Just gotta keep them now. That laser is in exactly the wrong spot. Here we go! This game generally does not have bullshit invisible walls. The only invisible things I have complaints about in the Crash series is uh, the under what the geometry on underwater levels is a little bit fucky at times. As we saw and Darian noted in the original Crash Warp playthrough, it, it was less of an issue this time. I think it's a little less uh, a little less off in the Insane Trilogy version. My finger's slipping off the thumb pad by the time I get to this guy now. Fuck! Not only do Nitro Crates negate the masks, they negate invincibility. Really? Like, even the, the triple masks? 
Dude, that that's some serious explosive. Cortex spent the last several games upping his explosives game. So, Darian, this was a conversation earlier. Uh, so, you figure Cortex is pretty much just a robotics guy? Like a, a mach machinist? And Brio is the... Brio is the genetic engineer? Because I thought about it, and all of, uh, like, all of Cortex's dudes, all of his mooks are robots. And all, all of his gear is machinery. You don't really get new mutants in use, and he doesn't use them as his minions. You don't get more new mutants after Crash 1. So I'm thinking all that Evolver Ray business, that was canonically Brio. And then Cortex just knows robots, that's all he's got. Unrelated to anything. You know what I haven't touched in a while? This Tetris Battle Royale. I wonder how much better than me everyone's gotten by now. I mean, they'd already gotten better be better than me by the, la the last time I played it. Damn it! I mean, you say that, but then you have, like, the... There were also robot creatures in uh, Crash 2. Like, there was a mix of authentic-looking wildlife or mutant creatures and, uh, and robot creatures. Or cyborg creatures, anyway. you like a crash game that had an open world like Jack and Daxter? Sure, I can go for it. I mean, Twin Sanity is kind of like that in that it moves from area to area directly instead of having a level select. Honestly, something like that seems more fitting for Spyro, but, you know, even so, I'm, I'm not dissatisfied with, you know, being able to move from world to world. If it were to be open world, I would need a very big variety of... I would need the same variety of landscapes as I got in a non-open world crash game for it to be worth it. Like, if it's very gradual moving between very similar landscapes, as, you know, would be realistic... I don't know, that's just not as fun as getting wildly differing areas from one level to the next. I like variety.
And you know, you say, well, no, never mind. I got confused. I was going to say, well, Jack 2 and 3 are open world, but Jack was 1 was open world, so. Imagine this, but less rigid. It doesn't feel rigid to me. More akin to Ratchet and Clank. So that's that's more like the that's more like the Spyro design. Is that you move from level to level and then you just kinda you explore the whole level. I don't know how I'd feel about that for Crash. Like that would take away a lot of the Like that would just be Ratchet and Clank but with Crash, I think. I feel like they, they would have to it would have to be very forced or very limited in how you get around. Because crash, crash levels are very linear. And that's kind of the point. That's from getting from point A to point B. Less rigid crafts, paths. I mean, the rigid paths are the whole point of crash. It's a design. It's a design philosophy very similar to the the 2D platformers. What is it you don't like about Castlevania? I, I mean, I've never really played a Castlevania game. It's a. I feel as it would be a similar problem to what I'm describing with Charles is a lack of variety. Like. Castle, castle basement, castle tower are not distinct enough locations for me to have fun in a game world. I want to see very wildly different, differing landscapes. Because I, I like exploring. I like exploring unique and varied areas. I don't like backtracking. And I don't like not having good control of my character so the early Castlevania platformers are out. Also not cr super crazy about the setting of Castlevania, but I mean that's not a killer for it. Still got robbed that last, uh, that one run. Yes, I'm still dwelling on that. feasible a crash maker would be. I'm sure there's not that huge a demand for it, but because of the linearity, it would be easier than something that was as, you know, wide. It would be easier than other 3D platformers because of how linear it is. We already have a fan-made uh, Mega Man maker. A 2D Sonic Maker and a 3D Crash Maker, I think, would both have potential to be interesting. And mind you, I'm talking all platformers, but, I mean, people have also made... There's Adventure Maker. There have been at least two attempts at fan-made uh, Zelda Makers. But to do that, you kind of need to have text and such. 
it's more of an undertaking to have it like an adventure game maker than a platformer. Oh, I was doing well and I lost it. Think about other stuff. Although they did include in the new, uh... Whatever. In the new Link's Awakening remake, they're including a dungeon maker of sorts. As far as it looks like, you can just piece room together. Piece rooms together. You can't actually build your own rooms piece by piece. So, I... Maybe they're just testing the water. Maybe there's potential for, a, like, a Zelda dungeon maker in the future. I would love the ability to, like, go full into the Mario Maker thing. Like, create your own overworld map, string levels together, create a mini campaign for people. But that's asking a lot. What's Lament of Innocence on again? Is that the PS2? It was an odd path to take, but it worked. Okay. God damn it! I was doing it, then I lost it. Gotta have those three masks. And create mini campaigns in Hotline Miami, too. I think it did have, like, a level editor or something, didn't it? Well, Jack and I did videos in that forever ago. Another top-down shooter. Not my favorite type of game, but we did a couple in it. I wonder what, I wonder what uh, Ratchet and Clank would be like. If it had started... Like, what Metal Gear is to Metal Gear Solid? That, but for Ratchet and Clank. Like a top-down Ratchet and Clank game with, with a bunch of crazy weapons. I guess that would probably be similar to Hotline Miami or... Uh, Gungeon or, uh, or other top-down shooter games we have nowadays. I guess in that world, the Ratchet and Clank game was probably the, the predecessor of those. Lasers in exactly the wrong spot. is what defined Ratchet and Clank. It's one of the things that was a component of it. I think the crazy weapons more defined Ratchet and Clank, personally. Also, who says it can't be top-down and uh, 
you know, have that kind of open world to it. I could see that argument with something like Contra, but in a top-down shooter, you could go wherever you want to. Swing shot, helipack, sure. Not saying it would I would find it as good as the 3D ones, but I think it would be conceivable. A top-down ratchet and clank. In the same way there can be both a 3D Zelda and top-down Zeldas. <laughs> ah just barely. Considered, uh, I considered naming the stream Crash and Smash, figuring we would get done with this in like an hour, and then maybe do some uh, Smash Brothers or something. I am now glad I didn't. A little behind. Okay, but we got our three masks. Come on, Coco. Trying to rush through that last section. You, uh, not a fan of the PS2 Castlevanias, Charles? that really matters. That's not where I'm going to be losing the bulk of time. Right through the needle.
Ah! Should have spun that guy. What ended the uh, the Castlevania height? Other than, you know, Konami. So, uh, what are the kind of what are the Castlevania games that you are more drawn to, Darian? Because I know you don't like Symphony. Is it uh, related to the gameplay for that, or do you still like the the Metroidvania kind of games more? How many kinds of Castlevania games are there? Are they the the Metroidvania kind of searching around and just platformers are kind of the two types? Shark discs? No? What are shark discs? Are they discs that are shaped like shark fins? Because that sounds cool. Red of the needle again. Rip. Spin offs and reboots instead of the actual story. I've heard that complaint about the Walking Dead series. is that, uh, I haven't watched it, but I heard that it kept going back to, like, uh, a different version of the beginning of the story, or the prequels and shit, and never really, like, tying up plot, plot threads, or continuing on further with the story. You mean Game Shark? Is that what you're talking about? I'm not struggling to get to the end of this level like I was with Stormy Ascent. I'm just I'm just trying to get the the time I need is all. This is definitely not that hard. I mean, you know, relatively. It's not going to take me four hours. 
At least it's not looking that way. Alright, this is going well. Thus far. Damn it! I think he just he kind of just streams casually for fun and some of the some of some of the guys like to watch him he does VR games I would say he doesn't really put the time in to gather an audience but that said neither do we like in order to get an audience on Twitch anymore like you got to do nothing else you got to spend 8 hours a day streaming you gotta spend another four hours on social media, like, throwing yourself out obnoxiously everywhere. It's not something that I am, am willing to do. Particularly since I do still, you know, work full-time. I, I ain't, literally ain't got time for that. I've heard Castlevania music before. It's all right. I've said this before, but video game music has a history of not really impressing me. Moto 2 did have good music, I'll give you that. As far as games go, Jet Moto 2 had a pretty great soundtrack. Still not anything I would rank especially high as, you know, listening by itself music, but compared to other games, it's pretty good. There are very few game soundtracks that uh, I've heard that make good listening music by themselves. The original Rayman is up there. Some music from, I guess, the DBZ games. The DBZ games have great themes. Just the regular in-game music is kind of... You know what the problem with the regular in-game music is just it's just worse versions of Stradivarius songs I already have and enjoy. Literally, it's just shitty knockoff Stradivarius. My one of my favorite video game soundtracks is a worse version of songs I already enjoy. I like the Battle Network music in the game. Again, not great listening music by itself, necessarily. The Mega Man Battle Network. I kept my mask somehow. Monster Girl Quest, believe it or not, has a couple of really solid, like, listening music tracks. 
It's hit or miss. Some of them are really, really just kind of cheap and forgettable. A lot of them are really cheap and forgettable. But they got a couple of real winners in there. And yes, I'll admit, I would say the same about Undertale. Only a couple, though. There are only a, a, a couple of Undertale songs that I'm... that I really enjoy. The rest was forgettable to me. I liked uh, the finale song. Like, Megalovania is alright, and uh, I think my favorite out from Undertale is the... Was it the Mountain King? Asgore's battle music? I forget what it's called. Damn it! Oh, that, that fucked me. I wouldn't necessarily listen to them by themselves, but I do have, uh... I do have respect for the Crash and Spyro soundtracks just because of how innovative they are. Like, you hear music from either series, and you can pretty much immediately identify it as being Crash or Spyro music. It's very distinct. Which is not something that can be said for every game. Sonic's had some good tracks throughout the years. Was never big on Mega Man. I like, uh, I like remixes of Mega Man with actual instruments, but I don't know, I'm a fuddy-duddy. Even as, even as a young bab, I really didn't think the music in Mega Man was particularly noteworthy. to play. What's Colossus on? PS2? Am I getting there later than usual now? school. I did an, an entire presentation on Norway, jokingly calling it Norwegia, because, you know, Norwegian. Norwegians are from Norwegia. And I never slipped up and called it Norway the entire presentation. The teacher never said anything. I was probably too devoted to the dumb bit. That was, that was a little much. But, you know, that was, that was 13-year-old me.
What's it? Castlemania? I love that game. Castlemania. It's great. It's on the MES, right? The Meme Tendo? What do they call that? It's a Castle Castlemania stretch lines or something. spin that guy without sending him into the nitro. Ooh, that's a good time. Just, I've made a game of seeing how fast I can get those starting crates now. Darian, you should uh, you should draw Dracul Mihawk as a Castlevania character. See what he'd look like. Is that his canon name, Dracul Mihawk? Right? Yeah, it was the dub that made him Hawkeye Me Mihawk, or the Four Kids dub. And I think they retcon that later in the Funimation dub as like a nickname or something. I, I don't remember the details behind Dracul Mihawk. One Piece. I realized I probably should have said what he was, what I was talking about. Fuck. What is it, Dash Bandicoot? It's that Dash, that Dash Bandicoot game on the game station. You got that? I wanna buy Dash Bandicoot. Old people at GameStop buying for their grandchildren, dot mp4. A hundred games in one on the Wii. Why, that's a wonderful value. Why would I buy any of, the, any of these other games if this one has a hundred on it? Troll focus, man. I, I ain't trolling, yo. I'm very focused. You think I ain't focused? I did Stormy Ascent. This ain't that hard. So I just, just going through the motions at this point.
damn it. So is this the last? Yes, this is the last level in the game. Once I have this Platinum Relic, I will have more or less done everything in the Insane Trilogy. I think there's still one achievement that I have to get. And I'll do that real quick. And then I will have uh, also all achievements for the Enchain Tr Insane Trilogy. And then I'll not never have to touch this trash game again. God, fuck Crash. I say ironically. at the height of the console wars, there were many uh, anti-Sony trash bandicoot detractors. It was uh, back when Sega was still on the console race. Oh, good. I blew it up without taking nitro damage. God damn it, that guy. Honestly, I didn't really hear a lot of uh, anti-Sony early on. Like, the Nintendo versus Sega was legendary. Everyone was on one side of that or the other. But I don't remember anyone really, like, uh, taking a diehard Sony pro or anti-Sony stance. At least among the people I knew. Okay. If I can make it over that guy and did a double jump, I didn't want to, but. God damn it. I was making through consistently until I started worrying about getting all three masks. Like, being able to take a hit helps. But uh, I'm really not sure if I can get the platinum time without the invincibility, is all. I'm sorry if I'm missing some comments, by the way. I am more focused for the crash, like, uh, plat the relic streams, just because of the nature of the, of the event. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. Landed on the lower platform, I am okay. And here we go. I would be heartbroken if that two crate just didn't go off. <laughs> okay, got caught on a lip. Wasn't an invisible lip, but it was just a lip. Just the regular kind. Going a little slow for this last area. Mm. Why did that guy disappear? What?
Yes, there has been a lot of... <laughs> that's, yeah. That's my panic noise. One of many. I considered eventually making, like, a, a Zellrock a Zellrog panic noise reel for, uh, I don't know, Mario Maker or something. Because there have been a lot in Mario Maker 2 for that. <clears throat> I still don't know why that second guy just disappeared. I was able to bounce on the first one. Couldn't have been invincibility frames. slow, but that's okay. I'm saving time in other ways. Like that. That's a good method. That's not... Ah! I don't know why I even spun that. Got my masks, and I'm making okay time. Didn't lose from there. There we go. This is the best run we've had in a while, so far. I'm sa saying that's gonna jinx it, I just know it is. to that, and that fucked it up a little. Oh, no! Okay, I'm fine. Ooh, that's a good trick. What's our time? Sub 47. Got it! If I jinx myself enough, it works. So I should actually, uh... Do your dance, Coco. You've earned it. I love Coco. As, as a character. I don't want to get weird about it. I should now have all the achievements. Unless... There's one, there's the one that I'm missing. You guys can't see the Steam overlay, so you're not going to see this. Uh, 98%. Okay, so I'm still missing one secret one. Which, I believe, is on the first level. I think. Something appears after you get, I think, all the relics or all the gems or something. There's a, a clear condition before... The thing will appear. The thing. It's, uh... It's fake crash, is what I'm looking for. And I think he's about halfway through the level. If either of you would be willing to look it up, I would be appreciative. I know there is a... I, I looked up the achievements a little while ago. There is... Huh? Wait... There's a hidden achievement. 
for someone off for fake crash off to the side in a level and i think it's the first one but i'm looking he's off in a house that's not a house that's a tent you in here I wonder, if I, I wonder if I have to be Crash. Oh, I see him. I see you, you fucker. Hey. Yeah. All right. You again did not see the pop up. I wonder how to, uh, I wonder how I can set it to capture the steam overlay. If that's a, uh, Maybe I have to capture layered windows or something. But there he is. That's the that's the final achievement. And we're done. I've now 100%ed every aspect of the Insane Trilogy. We've got all Platinums in all three games. we got every achievement. 100%. We have broken this game. You hear Coco? I've broken you. Going two and a half hours. All right. I guess that's it for me. Uh, I'm waiting for Nitro Fueled on Steam. So uh, we'll see that next year, I'm expecting. In the meantime, as far as Crash goes, I'll be going back to Nitro Kart and then Twin Sanity. So uh, I'll be back for that eventually. Thanks for hanging out, guys. And I'll see you later.